What's happening, J Nation? It's your boy, J Station. What's up, my demons? Back with another scary video. Yes, J Station fans, I not only stole the whole backwards hat thing from J Station, because he clearly invented it, um, but I'm actually also very, very jealous of his immense success and his ability to be incredibly creative and have almost an infinite uh, well of creative original ideas. What's up, Dream Team? The last person to leave the piranha- he is honestly very talented and full of lots of genuine behavior. You, 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 you know what, guys? I honestly, this is just a video about how I love Jay Station. The Santa Piranha! He's pretty nice! I'm not even afraid of him anymore! Alright, these piranhas are aggressive enough, so let's see what happens when we put their food in the water! What? No, but uh, seriously, Jay Station, you, you remember that guy? You were. You remember that guy? What a great guy that guy was. Look, I will say though that his hat game is, is the only thing I can compliment him on because wearing a backwards hat um, that is also made out of leather is not only extremely hot, it's extremely bougie. And we have to understand how incredibly amazing it is to land squarely in between frat bro and Keemstar. Keemstar being on the bougie side and frat bro being on the not bougie side. Don't worry, Keem. I know you have taste. I didn't say good taste, I said taste. No, but uh, seriously, you know you know what kind of man J Station really reminds me of though? He, he kind of reminds me of this. Hey yo, dick mommy, you're looking good in them yoga pants. And then, you know, he uh, kind of sucks in his teeth and whistles from across the street at some woman minding their own business. I, I don't know why J Station instantly became a cholo, but you know, some days you're a cholo, other days you're a frat bro, you know, what can I say? I don't know, Jay, Jay, Jay could also remind me of like the dude who used to deal like the narcotics to the country boys in my high school. Like, like I don't know, he just kind of gives off that I, I have no taste, but I have lots of money vibe. Anyway, uh, this video isn't an apology video from J Station, it's more of like a a, a plea for please give me money, please. That's that's how I would describe it. Uh, Jay doesn't want to admit that he's running out of YouTube money to fund his coke addiction, so he's taken to uh, becoming a Let's Player. Um, so he had to make a 35 minute announcement about this and- um, I've been through a lot in this four years. You guys see me grow, you guys see my mistakes, and you guys see my accomplishments, but it has been an honor to have made it this far. Don't worry, he doesn't say much. Um, he just kind of da dances around the issue of him uh, trying to raise the the bodies of celebrities who have passed. Oh, he's deleting all his videos. Oh no, not don't don't delete this quality piece of media. <laughs> Oh, there's still time that before he might delete him. What's today's date? Oh, it's the 8th. Oh, okay, um, yeah, he, I don't think he's gonna delete these considering he uploaded this all the way back then. Maybe he'll get around to it? Eh, I don't know. No, no, I don't I don't think he is. Sorry, uh, I, I think JStation is a hack fraud. And uh, while I got your attention about JStation's fraudness, um, I'd like to reach 200K by the end of the year. So if you could hit the subscription and, and bell button, so that way you can get informed of new videos, that'd be really great. Also, merch is on sale, so that's like double great. Like, not only can you subscribe while you're down there, but you can get merch on sale. Who doesn't like things that are on sale? That's right, nobody, everybody loves things that are on sale, okay? What, what are you, weird? You don't like on sale things? After YouTube, I wanna be a movie director and a producer for movies. I don't wanna be the star in the movie, but I wanna put together movies and stuff. And I was using YouTube as like, kind of a way to learn how to do everything, like special effects and everything like that. Oh, oh J, J Station wants to be a movie director which is an interesting thing to hear from a man who um, makes this. Okay, I, I don't wanna be a party pooper on J Station's dreams, but I think we need to accurately assess our talents here. Accurately assess our skills. Uh, l l listen, Jay, uh, speaking to you, like, being real serious here, um, I think we might be suffering from a little bit of the Dunning-Kruger effect uh, because success on YouTube literally means nothing to Hollywood. Trust me, I know. What do you what do you all think I do outside of YouTube? It's not really about making money or not, but it's about me having to keep on spending and spending and spending to make these videos. 
and I want to make these videos. If I'm being completely honest though, I don't want to make what I'm making now. I want to make new and better and never before seen stuff on my channel. But what I want to do is make scary videos. I don't want to stop making scary videos. Hmm. That's an interesting thing to say. Um, when you start making bananas big videos with the budget, um, the, the price can really uh, increase exponentially. And, and, and budgeting is a skill. In fact, you know, a good producer can budget out something like a music video really well. Now, when, when you're a scrub YouTuber like me, and um, just for point of reference, last year on my channel I earned uh, $18,000 for the year. That, that was my yearly salary. Um, which, not a lot. It's why I do video and photo work outside of the channel. But um, I, I can tell you from experience in both video and photo and, and my channel and some bigger videos I've done um, that, that it does not cost them as much as he's saying it is. And if it does, um, well, you know, I understand the need to try and get your taxes lower in uh, tax season. So, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna front, you know, I understand taxation is theft. I, I will say as of today's current date that J Station has not tried to raise any celebrities from the grave. So thank God. Um, I really like how he skirts over it in this video though. You know, I wanna have a good name. I want my kids to be proud of who I am. And I want my own fans to be proud of who I am. I want to have a good legacy. And I've learned from my mistakes. I used to just be naive and, and you know, hungry for success. I just said, you know what? I read, to be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tell you guys the truth. I read this book before YouTube called The 48 Laws of Power. And in that book, it said to get success, create controversy. Controversy is good no matter what. Hello, Editing FPS Diesel here, and I'm gonna keep this one short regarding this self-help book that uh, Jay clearly missed the whole fucking point on. Um, anyway, The 48 Laws of Power is a book about self-improvement that was banned from a lot of different US prisons, not all of them, but some. Um, and a lot of people have attributed that to business success in their life. Um, you can look at it, and at first glance, the book seems very Machiavellian. Um, it is and isn't really it's more about the wording a lot of self-help books in order to stand out use very different wording but generally the messages aren't necessarily bad it's it, it's about self-improvement um and, and i've and i've skimmed it i haven't read it it's a it's a rather large book um but i i can tell you without a shadow of a doubt uh jay miss the point and does not understand that then again i do not understand uh how, how he would have amazing literary skills so i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that he you know never paid attention in english class in high school i'll leave a link down to a summary of the book below as well as a link to the actual book if you're interested in reading it i i don't i don't know what he expected honestly I, you know he was only chastised probably thousands of times by commentary channels and by random people on the internet though I understand that once you start making that big YouTube money and you and you get a little little something you know you, your brain might fog up a little bit and so you stop listening to other people happened to Charlie Sheen tiger blood don't come cheap also I like how he, he constantly has to say yeah uh, this thing that happened not getting into it but just know that it happened don't don't worry sir we remember all of your trials and tribulations honestly like a cartoon character you are. I am not making any money on my YouTube channel. I cannot do these things anymore. I used to spend a thousand dollars on my videos. And you know what? Like if I ever do get monetized again, I'm gonna spend even more money than that to make these videos. Like I have bigger dreams, like I said, about being a movie director. My background light turned off because it's battery powered. Um, you know, I really feel like if YouTube didn't step in, uh, Jay Station wouldn't have realized that he had a problem. You know, he would have kept doing what he was doing, and you know, that's a really a damn shame because you, you, ha you shouldn't have to be hit in your pockets to, to realize that making a, a resurrection video of place beloved celebrity here 
uh, is inappropriate. You know, it, death is one of those things where I think there's a little bit of universal empathy because we can all understand it and relate to it on a human level because we're all gonna die someday. Not me though, I'm gonna live forever. Death can affect people really deeply and uh, some of you might know that there was a death in the family recently and I've been experiencing that process really firsthand um, and how people handle it. And I, I kind of put myself in the perspective of what if J Station were to do that with my family member? And, and, and it would be horrible. Not only would it just be incredibly traumatic, but I, I think it would make, you know, everybody really upset because you're, you're basically dragging out the corpse of a loved one. Like, could you seriously imagine the emotional damage of pretending to summon somebody that, you know, you, you had a personal relationship with? I mean, celebrities are one thing, but imagine if it was something even more personal than that. And for some people, celebrities and influencers alike are really personal. I, I love how he's like, oh, now I have the empathy, now I understand. No, you should already understand that. You should understand the concept of death. It's a universal concept. It happens in all cultures across the world. We might interpret it differently. The afterlife might be different, but at some point, they're gone. And, and, and that's something we all experience. Seriously, that whole idea of him having empathy now, it, it's, it's one of those things that it's really hard to buy back. When I look at his back catalog of all these videos, right? And, and he said he didn't delete all of them because of what he did in the past. Not, he'd delete the ones that, you know, weren't even like, oh, summon a celebrity, blah, blah, blah. None of that, you know, he, but he's got all these other ones here and he said he would delete them, but they're still there. So how can I buy that you understand what you did wrong and that you have empathy, you know? Like, it's all there still. How am I supposed to believe you? Like, now Jay says he wants to change, right? Which is a great thing to hear, but what are you really changing in your career when your entire career is built off the backs of uh, profitizing off of dead celebrities? I don't know. How could you feel comfortable continuing your career when it's built off the backs of others' misery? It, it, it really doesn't make any sense. I mean, even with commentary, I debate whether or not the videos I make are, you know, morally sound and okay to put out and that's something I have to deal with and whether or not that's okay or me protecting myself is something I need to deal with for the rest of my career. But you know, commentary videos, one thing. J Station summoning circle for Etika, definitely another. Oh yeah, remember that moment when he faked the death of his girlfriend and it was like this... Wasn't it like an abuse scandal? I, I don't remember it very fondly, but I mean, why would I? <laughs> But you know, th thanks for uh, thanks for reminding me about that, Jay. I really appreciate your uh, commitment to reminding me of all of the awful things you've done. <laughs> now, uh, considering I'm looking at this right now, and and it's been a bit since his last upload, uh, I'm gonna guess he hasn't gotten his monetization back. Jay also assumes that his apology was well received. At that point, I'd had already made a YouTube apology video that received over 3 million views and the like and dislike ratio on that video was surprisingly positive. It had more likes than dislikes. So I called it goodbye. It got just about 3 million views and I posted it on February 21st, which was maybe a week after they demonetized me. I was doing videos for free for a week and I really started to think about you know, what I did and reality had set in for me and I started to think about it and I'm like, you know what? I just need to like get off YouTube and it had 111,000 likes and 80,000 dislikes, which is actually pretty good considering like most people's apology videos are like overwhelmingly disliked. You know, I really did talk from the heart. I, I talked for 12 minutes, just completely uncut. I didn't expect people to forgive me for what I did, but. I know you know that your audience is children because you let's play games for babies. Um, so, well, they're, they're YouTuber bait. Like, like J Station could literally shit on a puppy and an eight year old would clap for his bravery. So are, are the likes and dislikes even a accurate, like, gauging question of whether or not it was a good apology or not? I don't know about that. I mean, he says himself that apologies are, are, are about the action, not about the video, but, you know, he was like, well, it was a well-received video, so where's my money? Doesn't happen that fast, bud. You, you gotta take some time. It takes some time for things to settle down. 
You know, uh, Jay, when I'm going to speak to you very sincerely here, right? When I look at your skills and I look at your reputation, your reputation is shit. You want to work in Hollywood. You want these Amazon shows. You want these net. You want any of these shows on these streaming platforms? Not let a, let alone cable or or film. Nobody's gonna want to work with you. Your reputation is horrendous. And hell, I, I I can't even say that you've made anything like worth a damn filmically from like a film perspective on your channel. There's just there's nothing that hits that level because the YouTube videos you put out are not horror movies or horror shorts. I will say though, and this goes for anybody that's freelance or self-employed, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I, I'm trying not to put all my eggs in the YouTube basket um, because if 2020 has taught me anything, it's that I cannot rely on the income from this channel to satisfy my meager living. Um, and, and that's why I do things like video and photo and do commercial work and stuff like that. And hell, I like it, I will say that, but don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, anyway, uh, what happens in the rest of this video? Well, he's like, woe is me. Why do other creators get to recover, but I don't? And then you look at the comments of the video and everybody can see right through, right through you. It's like you're translucent. Anyway, uh, the question we gotta be asking ourselves is where is Jay Station today? Has he gotten clean? Is he a better man? Has he found Jesus? Perhaps God even? Or maybe he's become a monk. No, unfortunately, he's become something even worse than a Christian. He's become a Let's Player. Uh, speaking of Christianity and symbolisms with that, uh, his new channel is called 666. Um, and you know, there's something with influencers and just on the nose branding about their personality. You know, we got Kino Body and his Patrick Bateman glasses, and we got J Station and literally the mark of the beast, sign of the end times. 2020 coincidence? I think not. So it turns out that uh, J Station is actually the true sign of the end times. And uh, you go over to 666, and uh, according to Cartoon Man, he's got videos with Alexia coming. Heart to heart between you guys, because I think it's important to open up and just tell you guys exactly how I'm feeling. And guys, I gotta say, I'm finally at a point in life where I like truly enjoy what I do every single day. It's been my lifelong dream to do gaming videos, and I'm finally just having fun on YouTube with you guys. And recently, the channel has been doing like super good guys you guys have been giving me so much thumbs up so many positive comments and being it just the thing i want to do most in life it means a lot to me so thank you guys so much it really keeps me motivated and lets me keep on putting out these videos for you guys by the way guys for the main channel i know a lot of you guys have been asking like what's going on with the main channel guys i love that channel so freaking much it just pains me not to make these videos but guys we got main channel videos coming out really soon guys really really soon believe me and yes Alexia is gonna be in these videos too guys hey so I'm, I'm gonna take a shot in the dark here and say he's either gonna pretend to kill her which let's be real he can't realistically do so um, I, I think he's gonna do the second and clickbait her body for for young boys to click on and go oh she's counting numbers in a bikini or he's gonna he's gonna become a filmmaker and make a horror short with a female lead and I don't think he's gonna do that third one, so let's let's just assume he's probably going with the second. Anyway, if you're all curious what's on the channel 666, um, it, it, there's not much. It's just Let's Plays of a YouTuber playing spooky games. It's about as rote and by the numbers as you guys can figure out. Um, you've seen it before, you'll see it again, and it'll happen until the end of time when people realize that the entire Let's Play genre is absolutely oversaturated by people who are already yelling. Kind of like how commentary is saturated by British people who pretend to give opinions on things. Sorry, I love some of them. Other of them, I don't love. But you know what? I'll just let people figure out which ones I do and do not like. Um, I will say though, from a technical standpoint, um, he's really loud. And ironically, despite being loud, his mic quality is garbage. Um, and considering he's made just stacks of money from YouTube, I'd really like to know where it went because it clearly did not go to the technical equipment that goes into making JStation videos. Um, honestly, the channel could be better. Um, it doesn't, there's not really much there. Maybe he should do some Reddit reactions. Kids love that. Um, but, you know, he's, he's clearly not grossed out by his career. He lives very comfortably. And uh, the channel itself of it has been growing. I mean, just look at these comments of small children who all watch his videos. Wow, 
They sure love you, JayStation. They're definitely, definitely grown adults. God, you have like a Jake Paul audience circa 2016. Anyway, his channel grows and then JayStation grows into a monster yet again, kind of like a Hydra. You know, really, really it's like an Ouroboros of, of, of chaos. You know, the, the cycle of chaos just continues with a new channel and the same audience. Anyway, um, when Jay does put out that big video, that'll be his comeback. Um, I would love to do a filmic review, looking at it from a filmmaker's perspective. So if you'd like to see that, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and also, you can follow me on social media, at FPS Diesel, on, on all the socials. I'm out there. Um, and if you're curious to see what I do outside of YouTube as a photographer and videographer, you can head over to this uh, at over on Instagram, and that's my professional portfolio where I post stuff uh, occasionally. I try to make sure to post our quality and try not to fill it with quantity. Um, also, it's hard to go out and photograph all the time in the middle of the pandemic. And uh, but before I go, uh, you know, after Etika passed, I went to the memorial and I, I saw it and I've never cried at the loss of a YouTuber and this was the first time I did. You know, because I really felt like we lost someone in our community. I didn't know him, but there's a certain kinship that YouTubers tend to have because they get it, they understand a job, and it hurt to just lose someone, and to lose someone who is from New York, someone I could have met, someone who hung around in the places where my girlfriend lives, who is in those areas and we were there and we signed the little visitors paper on the bridge and helped uh, keep it nice and clean and in good condition and there were some Joy-Con boys there and they were very polite um, and you know it really really hammers home how gross a lot of the stuff J Station like does it, it really is just not great um, anyway f fuck J Station man Goodbye, be well, and be smart.